Hello and welcome to installment number 13 of my panoramic photography tutorial series. My name is Florian, I run the website pano.ie, uh, on which I publish all my panoramas, have a look at that, but also panoguru.com of late, and um, yeah, let's get right to it. Today's topic is going to be how do I publish a panorama? I get this question a lot, so I decided finally to do a little demonstration of that. So I wrote up this post, so if you go to my page, uh, panoguru.com, questions, publish panorama, you'll find that. And I've written, I've compiled a few things here on that list. For instance, saying that you can use the free viewer that comes with PTGUI. If you have purchased PTGUI, you can use that to publish it on your website. Um, I like to use the Kera Pano player. Uh, that also allows you to publish uh, panoramas on your website. If you don't have your own website or you, that's too complicated for you, oh, by the way, there's other viewers as well, like Pano 2 VR, Flashificator, and there's a whole bunch of other ones as well. Um, but if you don't want to run your own website, you can also use, um, for instance, 360cities.net down here, around me, sphere, view at dog. So there's a whole list. Just look at that page or just do a quick Google. You'll find dozens of services that allow you to publish panoramas. But what I want to show you today or demonstrate to you actually is first um, using the PTGUI viewer, then the KR Pano player, uh, then uh, 360cities.net because I have an account with them. I don't have an account with the other guys. And also finally Google Maps. So let's get to it. So here's a panorama uh, that I made. It's finely stitched. I've got it um, with my logo at the bottom. That's debatable if you want this or not. But anyway, I've got it in two versions. The TIFF version that came out of PTGUI. You always want to use TIFF as much as you can because you know you don't lose any, um, any pixels due to compression artifacts and so on. But I've also made a JPEG version which is uh, required to upload it to Google. But anyway, let's get started, as I said, with PTGUI. So if you have your stitched finely stitched equirectangular 2x1 aspect ratio. You can open PTGUI, go to Tools, Publish to Website. You can add that file. Uh, here it is. I'll take the TIFF file. And um, yeah, so here you can adjust. Uh, this you should leave untouched, assuming you have a, an equirectangular file. Output, yeah, save it to the same as a folder. Well, maybe, actually, let's create a subfolder because it's going to create a whole bunch of files. Oops, PTGUI. Um, I'll put the TIFF in there and use that and I'll remove the first one. Okay, sorry for that confusion. So here's the file in its subfolder, in the PTGUI subfolder. Um, leave that alone on the left. On the right-hand side, you can tweak it. You can adjust resolution, the output size for the iPhone. Probably just leave that alone for the, begin uh, for the beginning and just... Uh, um, let it do its thing. The only thing that you really would want to adjust is at the bottom here, you have your web page title, you can set that, and your web page description. But yeah, you can change that later as well in the HDMI file. But anyway, you click on convert, and then PTGUI gets busy. And you'll see it'll create a whole bunch of files here. These are some, some tiles for it. And I think it's finished there. Yep, so we can close this. So let's have a look. Here's my TIFF file. That's what we had at the beginning. It created the viewer, JavaScript, and the Flash version, and also uh, a HTML file. And the HTML file, if we open this just locally, you can already see your, your panorama. You can zoom in with Shift and Control or Command. Go full screen. And here's our test title in our test description. You can change that either now in the HTML file. It's pretty straight, straightforward. Or you could have changed those titles and description in PDGUI when you created them. But in order to put them on your website now, you just take those files, you're going to throw them into um, on your server. So here's a, a connection to one of um, to a server that I run, and it'll upload it to knorn.org slash p slash ptgui. Now, one little note of caution. When you generate this, the, this viewer, it's all named after that file that you'd used. So your HTML file is also used, is also named townsquare.htm. So if I'm going to go to knorn.org slash p slash ptgui it's going to fail you know it's because it doesn't have it doesn't know that file it's not a standard file name so you want to rename it to index.htm or html it doesn't matter on most servers and there you go you've got your panorama online at your own website so that's it i mean it's you can customize it a little bit but not too much but it's definitely a start and it'll do the job quickly and you know you got it for free included in PTGUI. If you want it a little bit more fancy, what you can do is, so I'm going to take my 
to file, move it back here. You've seen the PTGUI. I create another folder for Kairpano now. You use the Kairpano viewer. That's a paid additional thing, but it works really well as well. So how do you use Kairpano? Well, when you download it, on the Mac at least it looks like this, and on Windows I think you have a whole bunch of bat files. But anyway, to get started really quickly, you can just take that TIFF file and drop it on the um, the make pano multi res. You can do normal, but I would always recommend multi res because that one will create actually a multi resolution viewer with different, you can see it here, different um, different levels of resolution so that it'll just load what it needs given the screen size or wherever you look. Because I get this question a lot as well why do my panoramas load so quickly? The usual simple answer is because they're multi resolution viewer, it creates tons of tiles. Oops, if you look in here. There's tons and tons of little files, as you can see, and it'll just allow the viewer to just load on demand whatever is needed, rather than having to monolithically load the entire panorama. But anyway, that's Kairpano done with its job, and it's created its viewer, which again, I can run locally by just opening the HTML file. It looks slightly different because it's a different viewer, but you have the same functions, you have buttons and so on. But the big thing with Kairpano is you can Let's have a quick look at the website, Carapano. You can configure it to your heart's content. There is tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of options and things you can do. There's some really cool examples also. If you look at, at what you can do with Carapano, with the interface, you can do virtual tours, etc. Um, but Carapano has the same, well, I wouldn't call it a problem, but the same little gotcha in that it create that HTML file will also be called whatever the panorama name was. So if you want to upload that to your server, and you want to, of course, upload everything except the the, the TIFF file. So let me put that here. Once this upload finishes, um, we can also look at it on my website. There we go. Uploads finished. So knorn.org slash p. And now we have the Carapano viewer. When I right click, you can also see that it's the Carapano viewer. So that's two ways of embedding this on your website. Now, what I will do, I don't want to include this here because it's going to go, going to get too long and a bit too technical. I also get the question very often, how do you now embed this on Facebook so that you can actually play the panorama in line like you could see it on, on my uh, Facebook feeds? Well, I'm going to show you this in a separate tutorial and uh, I'll link to it here on the screen. But for now, let's continue with this one here. After we've done PDGUI and Carapano, just a quick demo, let's move on to another publishing service that I like to use, and that is called 360 Cities. This is completely free. You can get a free account. You register. Once you're registered, you would go to Dashboard and then Upload, and you would upload your file through here. You can upload the TIFF file or a JPEG. Uh, of course, in this case, you probably want to use a TIFF file, but anyway, you upload the file. That's going to take a while, the upload, and then it's going to take a while for um, 360 cities to internally digest the panorama. I'll skip this step and also give, give me the opportunity to say this one. Here's one I made earlier uh, because I've uploaded one just before, actually the same one, uh, but it's finished ingesting it. So first it'll tell you that you have a panorama pending. That's when it's internally digesting it. And when it's finished digesting it, it'll say you have unpublished panoramas. So how do I publish this on 360 cities? The thing here is that you want to add a lot of meta tags so they can actually use it in their system nicely. Now, I'm not an expert at this and, and tagging and everything is a science in itself, but the panorama that I uploaded actually already is GPS tagged and it's also got its heading set correctly. And I did this using my uh, heading tools. Uh, I'll show you just a little plug for this. If I search for heading. There it is. I'll put a link in the description. I've created a little tool that'll help me to to set this to get this panorama heading correctly, and you can. And I've made a video on how to use that, so well, you're welcome to look at that as well. But anyway, once you've tagged that appropriately, then the heading will be set correctly so that it corresponds with the with the map, uh, and also the GPS has been set here. Down here, you can set your initial view. We'll leave it like this. We'll save it. So this will be the initial viewpoint. Then you work your way along the top here along these tabs. So next one up is name and description. So this one is quite crucial and it can be a little bit tedious because there's a lot of stuff you need to put in, but it's worth it, I guess. So here's a title that I made for this. Let's take that. And now let's have a look at the 
handle, which is the URL by which it will be stored. And when you put in special characters or non-Latin characters, then it'll chop these away. So let's, but I would, I do want Sesky Krimlov left and Namiesti, sorry for my terrible check. Namiesti, Svonosti, Sesky Krumlov. Okay, that looks good. So I'm going to save that handle as well. Yeah, don't forget to push these little save buttons all the time. But then a little um, a description in here. So view at dawn, no, dusk. I always mix the two up. View at dusk of the main square in Sesky Krumlov. It should probably be a little bit longer and it'll complain, but. Uh, don't get angry at me, but you can actually save it nonetheless if it's not that long. And finally, some tags, some keywords. I'll use those ones here that I've prepared. Chuck those in. And then finally, the last step. I don't need annotations. Other, um, for some reason for me, the time is always wrong. It wasn't at 10 p.m. It was, I think it was, uh, we can actually look, ah, just to be correct. Let's look in the EXIF data, it's 2043. 2043, I want to feature it in my profile, and then I'm going to save it. And then finally, once I've confirmed, make sure that you're happy with this with this line here, with the handle, because you cannot change this later. Everything else you can change later. But Sesky Krumlov, yeah, that looks uh, probably a bit, sorry, let me go back. Because mm -mm -mm. that looks a bit redundant like so. Okay, so I'm happy with this. Then I'm going to hit publish. And the file is going to be online instantly. I think no, well, it, it gets reviewed first. I think if you have a new account, um, it'll need to be reviewed first. But now you've got this and you can actually embed that panorama as well on your Facebook. But let's not do that. Now, finally, um, the last one I want to show you is uh, Google Maps. So let's go to maps.google.com or Street View or Google Views. I They keep changing things. I've lost track. So that can be a little bit confusing. And I just had to re-record this because I got confused how to do this. But anyway, let's have a look for... Um, I'll try again. So here's that town square where I had that picture. Normally, in order to add a panorama to, to Google Maps now, you actually have to attach it to a place. So if, if I click on this place down here, you can actually find the button at a place. But I want to actually attach it to this town square. But it doesn't kind of let me do that correctly. Other than if I click on this, then I get the town square. And now there's no add photo button here. And that's what confused me earlier. But if you click on here, then you get an add photo button. And there I want to choose to upload my photos. It's on my desktop panel. And here that's where my JPEG comes in handy because uh, you can't upload a TIFF to this. Uh, once you've uploaded this file, and I hope my internet connection won't let me down, but as you upload the file and then it's it's uh, it's uploaded, you can, yeah, you edit, you attach it to the place. It needs to get reviewed first by Google, of course, and then, but that usually takes less than a day or so, and then the panorama gets uh, live and you will be able to see it on, on Google Maps. And from there on, you can also share it Uh, but I guess the easiest would be to use more, more dedicated servers like 360 Cities or some of the other ones uh, rather than Google Maps in order to share your thing. So now it says, you know, thank you for your photo. Soon it'll be on Google Maps. So it's kind of anticlimactic like this. But uh, yeah, hopefully in a little while it'll show up and I might link to the to this panorama specifically once, uh, once it's online. But um, yeah, that's kind of what I wanted to show you today in terms of publishing. So again, do have a look at my post here in questions... Publishing as a starting point, um, there's a, couple, a whole bunch of links in here, um, but that should really get you going to publish your panoramas either on your own website or using some of the services there. All right, that's almost all. Just a last reminder, I want to make one more tutorial about how to actually embed your panorama in Facebook. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Bye.